Wyatt, good to see you. Uh, are you uh, quarantined? You're, you're in New York? Are you in Brooklyn? I'm in Brooklyn, yeah. I'm uh, in Brooklyn, actually very close to where all the demonstrations have been happening. Have you uh, participated in any of these uh, protests? Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to when it's right outside your your door. You kind of, you kind of- Go to the feel, deli. Yeah, you kind of feel like, and yeah, really anytime you have an errand, you're basically like, oh, well, okay, I'll, I'll spend a few hours here and then I'll, I'll maybe go get uh, that toilet paper I needed. You were, you were telling me some story, was it your grandma? Yeah, I think there's a part of like wanting to get involved that I get from my grandmother. and. My grandmother was always very much the person. She would go into the city to go see a movie. And I remember her calling me one day and she, I think she went to go see Joanna Man or something like that. And yeah, cause she just supported any movie with black people in it. Yeah, and Joanna Man. Yeah, and that was, she was the one old lady watching Joanna Man <laughs> at a movie theater in Manhattan. But when she left, there were people protesting and marching and my grandmother was like, I should go see what this is about. And went and asked somebody and the next thing you know, she was like, I marched with them and I met two really nice people and I marched them back to my little apartment in Crown Heights, Brooklyn and I made them dinner. And that feels like that's what the power of collective action is. People coming together and it's not just their voices coming together, it's communities being built. If my grandmother could walk out of Juana Man and join a demonstration, then I have no excuse <laughs> to do the same. Um, your show, Problem Areas, was on HBO. I think it might have been the last time you were on our show promoting it. Um, and uh, you really would just take one issue and all the episodes would be about that issue. I think the first season was education. No, the second season was education. The first season was policing. Uh, it's very interesting. The show's not on anymore. Nope, so got canceled. And then you, you did something, I, I, this guy, I don't know if it's, I think it's unprecedented. I've not, I've not seen this before. You tweeted about it and uh, you said like, hey, I'm not saying it's going to do anything, but what if HBO just put the shows up on YouTube for free? I just kind of put it out there that if, they, if HBO wanted to make it free on YouTube, I'd be cool with it. And I, it picked up steam in a way on social media that I honestly didn't expect. A lot of people retweeted it and agreed with it and liked it. And it got to a point where HBO then said, yeah, why don't we do this? And they made it all available for free on YouTube. Is there anything that you'd like to highlight that a lot of people don't really talk about with policing. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a conversation that's starting to happen now where people talk about how police budgets are being used and just the idea that yeah. why as citizens, as taxpayers who pay into a police system, do we not have more oversight and control over how those dollars get spent? So much of the conversation that we have, yes, we need, to re we need to do things like change the way police are being trained and do things like, you know, there's a law in the books, 50A, that hides, uh, it's, it makes police personnel records hidden to, uh, to people, to, to public request. What, what can people do to, 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 to help with this? I mean, do they, they look up every city where they're from and say like, hey, what is it, what's our policy? What is our 50A or does everyone, does 50A cover everyone? No, 50A is just in New York. And so in New York, there is something uh, called the Safer New York Act, which has laid out a few things, including repealing 50A. And we need to reach out to our local officials. And a lot of it is doing that. It's reaching out to local officials. It's amplifying the voices. Do you feel like um, something positive is coming out of these protests or can come out of these protests? I hope so. I mean, I think what feels different now as opposed to even just a couple of years ago is I feel like people are starting to look internally and say, okay, well, as a white person, what is it that, what is my responsibility in this? What is my role to play in this? 
And where have I been complicit in allowing these things to happen? And so I think what I feel hopeful for is as people are opting into this movement, they continue to opt in and recognize that we are no good when we silo ourselves off, and especially when the wealthy can silo themselves off to the detriment of everybody else. Yeah. Why? Well, thanks so much for talking to me and coming on my show and having a great conversation, and I hope to see you in person. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks again, bud. Stay safe, okay? You thank too. You. Yeah, thank Bye. you. Take care. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. On and on and on. Uh, I said... And it's on and on and on.